it's nice to be back because Paul found this. It's real Thai lemongrass. It's quite rare around here and this is just a celebration of it. I won't be using it all because it's precious, but um, you may not know how to prepare it to start with. So I'm going to prepare one and then I'll do the rest while you are not watching. To get rid of the top, you get rid of the bottom. Then you want to peel these tough leaves off the outside and you get down to the tender, juicy bits. Okay. So that is basically the rubbish. Now, what you now need to do, I've got one of these, but whatever you bang things with, basically. Now you can chop it up finely. And now you'll get out the wonderful aroma. So you probably didn't know that unless you'd seen it done. Some of it you need to peel further, some of it might need less, but the taller it gets, the worse it is. Unlike most plants where as you go higher on it, it gets more tender, this doesn't, it's the inverse. Now you see that is too tough there, so we'll throw the very tough bits away. Okay. Now I'm using a Dutch oven. I don't know why they're called that, I suppose I should look it up and find out really. But this particular thing it's cast iron covered in enamel it's incredibly heavy but the joy of it is if you don't have an oven you can use this and it will produce a kind of oven copy of the style of cooking so you put the flame on don't put it on too high to begin with and it heats up slowly consistently then it goes through to this very heavy cast iron lid eventually the whole thing is burning hot and heating from above the sides below it's not a saucepan now if you are living in a bed sit and you don't have any access except to one ring I'm going to be doing a series of whole meals that go in here and taste like heaven okay so we go back to this one I'm going to chop up three of them. Now, the nature of this herb is that it's, and it is a herb, is that it's actually quite spicy as well as incredibly lemony. It's an incredible citrus, but it, it is a heat that builds in the mouth when you eat it. So you don't want all these bits, so that's why you cut them so fine. In a stir fry, you would be even more ruthless throwing away the coarse outer edges and so you end up with very little you can actually use. Okay, so to that, I'm going to add some garlic. I've got quite a bit of garlic, but this is to cook a whole chicken. I have, this is half a tin of coconut milk. And the reason it's gone granular is because it's straight out the freezer, because I used another half for something else. I'm saving these for another dish, okay? Then, not the top halves. So I'm moving my elastic band up. This was washed when it came home but the bottom half. It's coriander, fresh coriander. If you can't get it, if you can't get any of these ingredients, substitute. You could use, but this is particularly fragrant. And it, it's simply because we got a hold of the, the Thai lemongrass and it really is a wonderful thing to have. Okay. Now, the only other 
smelly ingredient that's going in is the ginger. Now this is stringy, so I'm just going to squeeze the fresh ginger out of it. And I can probably get some more out of this bit here. There you are. Okay. For the heat, I'm adding three. I'm not cutting them. I'm not letting the seed pods out. I just want that little sharp, um, chili has a heat that's very instant. Whereas the lemongrass doesn't, okay? Now, my vegetables. This is fennel. I've got some carrot. I have some red pepper and I have some wonderful green pepper. Look at this green pepper. This was just two of them, no three of them, but they really are fabulous. You only get these at this time of year. They're long and narrow and they're not really bell pepper shape. No. I'm going to add these. They're shallots. I've already peeled them. They're going in whole because shallots taste nice when they're on your plate, whole. Carrots. Now we're running out of space, which is my problem because I've got to fit this wonderful chicken in. Okay. You do need some red pepper because it's sweet, like the carrot is, but it imparts a very sweet. It's just nice to go in this dish. If you had a bigger Dutch oven, and I haven't, I've only got one, and the, I was I chose this because when it's full, it gets very heavy to lift. So this is the biggest I can cope with. Right. I'm going to put that in. I think we need a bit more of this. Now, because the heat will be coming underneath before everything else, you will need to add some liquid. So I have a tin of my favourite tomato. Right, you've got all your flavourings in there. Now we're going to mix it. <clears throat> we need to mix it so that everything gets some sort of flavour. Yes, lemongrass and ginger, they just go together very, very well. Now, what I want to do, I want to pile this up around the edge and I want to lay my chicken in. Now on this occasion, I'm not going to turn my chicken upside down, which may surprise regular viewers, because there's a lot of moisture in this and I really just want to be able to leave it like that. Okay. I've taken all the ribbony bits and elastic off and all the labels and everything else. Now what I want to do is to cut up some potato and get them round, but we're getting very short on space. So, I'll have to see what I can manage. I don't want these to turn into a mush at the bottom, okay? So what I'm doing, I'm trying to just get them to bake around the chicken. 
right? That's all I'm trying to do, but I can't get in enough of my potatoes, which is quite annoying, really. Perhaps I should have to invest in a, a new one. I mean, I lived for a long time without Paul, and so everything was geared around how, how weak my arms are. But maybe I can actually cope with a, a bigger one now. The idea is that these radiate from above and everything cooks nicely. The steam will rise, hit the surface, roll back down. Plus you've also got the heat penetrating from above. It's a wonderful system of cooking. And this set me back about 29. It's not a, a Le Creuset, it's a pretend knockoff one. But even if you bought something that was a reasonable manufacturer these days, you're looking at about 35. That's a lot cheaper than buying an oven. And if you've got a tiny little flat or a bed sit with one little ring, you can cook on one of these. And it's a wonderful way to cook, really. I'm going to put a bit of pepper on the top because potatoes need something. The salt goes on top of the breast meat and on top of the potato. That's that dealt with. Now, I'm going to take some oil and I'm going to just put some over the top. All of the chicken juice and fat goes down into the vegetables. It's a wonderful way to cook, as I keep telling you. And I do hope somebody just doesn't watch them because they're entertaining these shows. They actually go ahead and cook these things because it's easy. Now, remember what I said, you don't put it on flat out. Okay, it's almost equivalent to putting them into a cold oven. I know you could brown your meat all over. That's a lot of work for very little increase in quality of merchandise at the end of the day. So let's turn it. Now look, uh, that's too hot for me. That's it, that's on full. And I'm turning it right down to about there, which gives this thing a chance to heat through before it burns the bottom. Okay, and you can get these very hot indeed. You can get them hot enough to bake bread in. So you can get quite a lot of use out of one of these. It, it's, it's as versatile as an oven, which is hard to believe. They actually make this little dip so that if the button gets too hot, you put water in the top and then you can always lift it up because that keeps the button cold. I've never actually done it that hot. Now these things are gonna take slightly longer than your oven because this chicken, I would cook it for about an hour and a half in that sauce. I'm going to cook it for an hour and three quarters. And I think that will produce a really nice meal. Okay, so we'll come back later. But I couldn't get all this in. I'm always very optimistic about what I can get in. These I want to chop up at the very end and lay them over the top. So you get that perfect, new, zesty, light, aromatic quality of this particular herb. Okay, you should be able to get your coriander. This was more difficult. If you can't get it, well, you'll have to leave it out and use lemon peel. Okay. Right, this now has been on for 10 minutes. It's reached temperature. Can you hear? It's quite a vigorous boil. So I'm going to turn it right down. It'll take a while to calm. If it hasn't calmed enough, I'll move it onto the tiny, tiny ring. I'm going to move it onto the tiny, tiny ring. It's still not calming enough. Can you see the difference in the size of the lights? If you only have one ring, you probably can get it right down. I can't touch that, it's so hot. It's really hot all over, so now it's acting as an oven, which is what it's supposed to do. And we'll come back at the end of the the time so it must have had about it's had 10 minutes and I suppose it's got another hour and a half to go it's been the hour and a half so we're gonna lift this off and as you can see we have a lot of liquid has a lot of liquid has come out of the vegetables but what we're going to do we're going to 
just show you you see this is soft they just break up and that's because the steam and the heat it's just gone everywhere you can see that we've got a cooked chicken but it hasn't all turned into a soup now what I'm going to do I'm going to float these potatoes back into the liquid so that they pick up the flavours okay we're going to move this to the side I'm only going to give it another five minutes with the lid on and these herbs added so we've really got something rather special now if you had gone out for a takeaway you'd have got something like about that size so you've got all this food you didn't have to do anything you could still do your studying you could still watch your television while it was cooking you could make your phone calls you don't have a problem oh dear I'm very tired now so there is no reason why just because something takes an hour and a half to cook that you can't put it on have an aperitif for whatever you want to do <laughs> all the things that you normally do leave it to cook and come back and have it right I'm just going to turn the heat up a little bit and it quite quickly will catch this um, we could easily chop it up but I'm just going to leave it for a couple of minutes just to let it relax as I'm always telling you so that we can cut it up now we left the breast meat out so that basically has steamed you've got all the flavorings in there to go on the plate if you put some rice with it or blotted it up with bread whatever you've got a really nice meal and that would do four to six people and the vegetables so these Dutch ovens are wonderful devices really good and you can hear it's already bubbling quite fast but it's pretty straightforward anyone can do that it's really easy and I'll be making quite a few meals in this little gadget that is um, where I chipped off the enamel about 15 years ago but that's life isn't it okay right I just want to show you this the texture of the meat it's not like a stew you can see this is quite quite firm it's not all mushy and wet and revolting and I just want to show you this too this is your breast meat can you see this is this is it's a firm it, it's it's not stewed meat it's not roasted because it's had the steam going to it but it's very moist and it's just the way Paul likes it really moist very tender but not falling apart and that had an hour and a half but as you can see the sort of size we often buy this size because this serves four portions plus another to add to soup and things so it's a good size for us if you have a slightly bigger one then you leave it slightly longer this isn't this isn't great science this is very simple so this has been fiddling about with the herbs in it they haven't lost their color it really has just infused a bit like making a tea now I'm going to put this on the plate and look at all those lovely colored vegetables look at that and you've got the potato as well and I'd like some as well and this is this is a very simple meal but the sort of flavors you've got here are very Thai like flavors they are quite delicious I don't want all that carrot I'm not a big carrot girl there you are that'll probably do quite well Paul loves carrot don't you darling there you are <laughs> Now, you do need to warn your guests, and you also need to look out to not put your chilies in your mouth because they will be quite warm. So, that I'm just going to put the lid back on. 
there is no more flame and you have yourself if you're a student living on your own and you made this meal you could have this every night you could add some orange juice to it one night to pep it up you could add some cream another night you could do quite a lot of versions of things you could have it with rice you could have it with bread you could have it with pasta and you've literally it was just a time to chop up the vegetables that keep keep it in the fridge take out a portion reheat that one portion and add a different little substance to it that is such an easy meal well i'm just going to have a little taste and um oh it's it's absolutely gorgeous it's not particularly hot it's just warm and glowing oh wow it really is rather nice the um the lem lemony perfumed it, it's when i say it's lemony it's not fruity lemony it's perfume lemony if you can imagine a lemon as a flower that's the aroma you get from this particular spice you've got the warmth of the ginger the little tiny little tiny bite from the chili this is such an easy dish anyone can prepare so i do hope you'll try it and enjoy it